Hello YouTube, Matt Mizzero, and today we have some Tom Clancy's The Division, and what I want to do here in this video is actually give you guys my general thoughts and opinions towards the game so far, now that the live version of the game is available to us. The full release is now out, as compared to the last time I talked about The Division, which was actually the beta. I did kind of like a mini review of the beta, and just talked about the very limited things and the very limited features that we have available to us then during the beta. Well, now the full game's out. There's a lot more to talk about, and I've been playing the game quite a bit over the course of the past couple of days, so I just wanted to sit down and give you guys my general thoughts and opinions of the game so far, talk about the setting, talk about the dark zone, talk about the looting system, talk about how you level up the base of operations and things like that. So if that's interest to you, stick around because we're been talking a lot about the division here in this video. First things first, let's talk about what the game actually is. It is an open world cover based shooter that has a lot of MMO elements. The world that we're set in is actually a very interesting world. So essentially there's this virus that was spread via money on Black Friday and New York is essentially being quarantined. We're playing as a member of the division, which is an elite group of people who are kind of trained for this kind of like a doomsday scenario where we're kind of here to try and bring order back to the city and it's a very interesting setting it really is you're looking at this beautiful city New York City right and as you're walking around the city you kind of realize just how grim the world actually is everything is kind of creepy by the fact that there's holiday decorations everywhere because this all happened during the holidays essentially so while you're walking through the city and you have all these rats running up and down the sidewalks and you have these rioters or these or these cleaners coming down the streets and whatnot that are really is trying to hassle like all these citizens of the city or they're killing people and things like that and all the meanwhile you hear like happy Christmas music in the background with all these decorations and stuff it's a very creepy and interesting world that this game is set in that's one of the first things I noticed when I first started playing this game it's a very interesting setting now like I mentioned earlier the division actually has a lot of MMO elements but I will say there seems to be a lack of actual players in this open world this is described as an open world cover based shooter but there's not a lot of actual players in the open world it's most mostly NPCs and stuff like that, where you do have a lot of really fun random encounters, those do happen, but you rarely will actually run into other players. The open world is a bit lacking in this game, I would say, because I've played the game for probably six or seven hours so far, and I've never actually seen another player out in the world. I have seen a ton of players in this game, but those players were in safe houses, the dark zone, or in missions that require you multiple people to actually complete. So let's talk about a couple of those really quickly. Let's start with safe houses. They are essentially these areas that are set throughout the map. I mean, various areas of New York City, you're going to find a safe house. And when you go in there, it's kind of like a little area of operations for you to try and get an idea of what's happening around you. So you walk into a safe house here, you see there's a lot of other agents. This is where a lot of player interaction can actually happen. And while you're here, you can go up to this board and you can essentially get a bunch of missions. It'll scan the area. You can learn all the things that people wrote up on this board about the area around you. And from there, you know where a lot of side missions are, or different things for you to do is. So it's kind of a neat little system that they have going on there, as well as, of course, you can sometimes find vendors there and things like that. So those are essentially the safe houses. You can also find a once again, a lot of players there, and that's where the majority of your player interaction can actually happen. While you're there, you can uh, view the player's player card. You can send them messages like, hey, do you want to come with me? You want to go out there into the world? We'll go do some stuff together, and that's where you can meet up with players. My brother started playing with a guy from Norway, and they have been playing this game, I think, every day since this came out so far. Like, they are just really having a lot of fun just taking on the, the world of New York City, essentially, together, and that's one of the benefits of safe houses. There's definitely some player interaction to be had there. Now, leveling up in this game can actually be very fast. I've always been somebody who likes to explore and walk around, probably more than I honestly should, unless I'm doing a Let's Play. If I'm doing a Let's Play or, like, recording myself playing the game, I'll typically try to speed things along to try and make sure a lot of interesting things are happening. But if I'm playing a game by myself and I'm not recording and just trying to just enjoy the game like I've been doing here with The Division, I typically go very slow. I'm somebody who likes to stop and smell the roses. And while that, yes, that is very beneficial because if you actually do take the time to explore the city, see what buildings you can get into, see what rooftops you can actually get on top of, there is going to be a lot of loot for you to find. That's definitely an aspect of the game. There's going to be a lot of loot and stuff like that for you to find. But if you want to actually level up very quickly in this game, it's definitely possible. Once I found out that you can essentially just find a safe house, right? You just run up to a safe house. You get all of these side missions and stuff like that that are in the area. You can just do side mission after side mission after side mission and level up very, very quickly while doing some main missions occasionally or doing some things for your base of operations. Now, the base of operations we talked about in the beta video, but it's definitely the most integral part of this game, so I want to cover it here in this video as well. The 
first thing you do in this game is you want to set up a base of operations within New York. Now, what this is, is it's kind of like a unique safe house that only you can access. Every player that plays this game has their own base of operations. Within your base, you actually have an area for crafting, which is an interesting mechanic. A lot of games have crafting, and this game is no different. So what you can do is you can actually make weapons and gear, assuming you're actually out there in the world and loot the materials for it. So if you have the materials, as well as you've got the blueprint, which usually you get blueprints from doing missions for something, like for example, you can make an M4 weapon. You can actually make an M4 assault rifle if you would like it, but you have to actually have the materials to be able to craft it, as well as you need to be somebody who actually has the blueprint for it, and you get that blueprint by like doing missions and stuff like that. So not only can you get gear from things out in the world or from a vendor, but you can also get it by crafting it as well. So just another little layer uh, to the game right there. But of course, like a typical area you will have in an RPG style game, you of course are going to have weapon vendors and gear vendors and all types of vendors that you can purchase things from and sell stuff back to them if you would like. But the most interesting aspect of the base of operations is going to be the wings. So there's three wings in your base. You have the medical wing, the tech wing, and the security wing. The division actually has an incredibly unique mechanic for acquiring your skills, which is unlike anything I've seen before. And I'm somebody who's played a wide variety of games over the years. And of course, maybe this is in a different style of game that maybe I don't play too much, but I've never actually seen anything like this. So how you acquire skills in the division is by actually doing missions and completing things for your base of operations. You don't get skills necessarily from leveling up and acquiring XP. You get them by doing missions for your base of operations. So to give you guys an example, I am a security player, essentially. I chose to go with the security wing first. I want to do all the missions there. And and essentially, I can upgrade my security wing by getting security supplies, which I get from doing missions and stuff like that that award me security supplies. So the more I get, I can actually purchase these different things for my security wing. And whenever I purchase something for my security wing, it is going to give me new abilities and new perks and things like that, as well as it will actually put some new things in my base of operations, like a cache that I can open every 12 hours or a special weapons vendor or things like that. So it's definitely a very unique way for you to unlock your abilities. And I should say that the class rules in the division are very MMO-like. A lot of people can this game to be kind of like a light MMO because again there's not a lot of actual people out in the open world but there's a lot of other MMO style elements and one of them would be the class rules that we have available to us here in this game now somebody who has played a ton of those rules online in World of Warcraft I think I know some class rules when I see them so we have the classic rules of a tank a healer and a DPS and all three of those are present here in the division so somebody like me who specs heavily into the security wing you're essentially a tank you're somebody who can put up shields so you can reinforce cover and you can also kind of force the enemy to try to attack you, making it so the other players in your squad can actually take them down with their weapons. So it's definitely an interesting way to play, but I don't claim to know exactly how the quote unquote threat works here in the division. It's definitely weird. I've noticed that whenever I pull out my shield, all of the enemies around me seem to try to attack me over everybody else. I think that's a high generator of threat. Here's a nice clip of me distracting a sniper in an instance while a DPS teammate sneaks up to him and actually kills him. It's kind of like a cool little thing. For whatever reason, when I pull out that shield, everybody tries to shoot at me. So it's definitely an interesting little mechanic mechanic right there and there's also a number of other mechanics with like your attachments that you can put on your weapons because of course you can mod the heck out of your weapons in this game and one of them is a silencer if you put a silencer on your weapon it, it says it will reduce your threat but again I don't know exactly how threat works in this game or how exactly you generate it so it's a little bit confusing in that respect but if you're playing as somebody who is using a bunch of abilities from the security tree you're essentially playing as the tank if you've ever played like in an online MMO game before the healer class of this game of course is going to be people that spec into the medical wing and do a lot of the missions for the medical wing. These are players that can heal their allies as well as give them nice buffs like extra crit chance or extra critical damage for a short period of time. Then you have the tech players which are like your DPS players. These people are just kind of designed to do a good amount of damage. They have really cool abilities like a borderland style turret that you can throw down. It just It's a DPS style system and from what I understand you can just swap between these at any given time because all you have to do if you want to swap between being like a security player to like a tech player is level them up in your base of operations. Just go do the missions, unlock the abilities, and then you're set, right? That's all it really comes down to, which is a really nice system, in my own personal opinion. The looting in this game has been fantastic. It's one of my favorite aspects of this game is looting, because I'm somebody who likes looter shooters. That's definitely becoming a genre over the past couple of years. Like, you have Borderlands, and you have Destiny, and now, of course, you have The Division, where it's a shooter game, but it's all about acquiring loot and acquiring gear. It's fun for a lot of players, myself included, because it's always nice to see that nice drop. I think it's one of the big reasons why I played Borderlands, Borderlands 1, 2, and a sequel as much as I have in the past, right? I like that system. So the looting in this game is like Borderlands, and it's also like Diablo, but I think Borderlands copied Diablo. But regardless, it's like both of those games, right? So enemies can drop loot, and the loot is going to be color-coded. White is like your average gear. It's like, eh, that's okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world. It's probably not going to be anything that's like going to be an upgrade or anything, but it's gear, and it 
might be good for you depending on what stats it has. Then you have green, which is better than blue, which is better than that, then purple, which is better than that, and so on and so forth. Each piece of gear also, I should note, has major and minor attributes assigned to it, which really takes your character customization to the next level. It's fantastic. So if you find a piece of loot, you should actually pay attention to the attributes that are assigned to that particular piece of loot, because I think understanding your gear and how it actually affects you is going to be something that really separates good players from bad players, because it's going to be very easy to think to yourself, yeah, this piece of gear here gives me more armor, therefore it must be an upgrade, I should probably equip it. But if you don't actually take the time to look at the major and minor attributes of that particular piece of gear, it might not actually be an upgrade. It could be terrible. It could be something that's just going to make you a worse player and make you do less damage and take more damage and just everything, right? It could be a bad piece of gear. You need to actually pay attention to the attributes. It should also be noted that you can also customize how your character looks with what is essentially like a Diablo-style transmog system where you can just go over here to your appearance and then if you have these things, you can change how your gear looks. Now, you actually get this stuff by doing things out in the world. How I got all my appearance pieces was by randomly finding like a civilian out there in the world and then I would talk to them and I would like give them some canned food or give them water and stuff like that and then they would like give me a hat or something along those lines which I can wear. It's all cosmetic and it doesn't actually like make you do less damage or like doesn't make you a worse player or anything. It's just a cosmetic change to your appearance so you're not forced to look like the gear that you actually have on. It's, again, it's essentially a transmog system. So it's pretty cool. Then you have the dark zone which I haven't spent a lot of time there. A lot of people actually consider the dark zone to be like the end game of the division which I have played in here a bit during the beta. I played a little bit here in the live version of the game as well. But the thing about the Dark Zone, to me, is it's a very interesting concept. It's like DayZ within uh, within this game, but at the same time, it's one of those things where you kind of really need to have a group of players with you, because it's hard to survive in the Dark Zone with just by yourself. So, what the Dark Zone is, is that's where the infection hit the hardest in the city. It's a, it's a part of the city that's entirely quarantined. There's, you know, it's complete martial law in there. There's nothing, there's no security, there's no protection in there. You go in there, it's every man for himself, right? And there's also a lot of really good gear. So, when you go in there, there's a lot of great NPCs for you to try and take down. There's a lot of very powerful guys in there, and they can drop you some really good loot. But the thing about it is, all the loot in the Dark Zone is contaminated, so you can't just put it in your backpack and walk out. You have to extract it with a helicopter to decontaminate it so you can actually keep it. So you get some nice loot, you, you group up with some people or something like that, you know, you go and kill a bunch of NPCs and you get some really good gear. Now you have to extract it by going to an area where a helicopter can come down. The thing about extractions is everybody in the area is aware that there is an extraction happening, and like we've learned from DayZ, People are scumbags. They're going to come up and try and kill you, right? They're like, wait a minute. This guy's got good loot. And he's trying to get out here with that loot. Let's ambush him with our group of people, kill him, take his new loot, and get out here ourselves. Because that's what people do, right? That's the whole point of the Dark Zone. And I should also note that no, like, you won't lose your gear that you walked into the Dark Zone with. That's not how it works. You will only lose the loot that you are yet to decontaminate. So the loot you walked into the Dark Zone with, that's fine. You won't lose that. But if you go into the Dark Zone, kill some NPCs, take their loot, and try to get away with it, and you haven't decontaminated it yet, and you die, you're going to lose it. That's it's very nature of it. So if I go kill an NPC, I get a really cool blue gun and I try to get away on the helicopter to extract it out of the dark zone and somebody kills me, that blue gun's going to drop for them. They can just pick it right up off the ground. So it's definitely an interesting place to be, but it's very PvP based. If you're somebody who's not really into PvP, I have heard from people that are already max level in the game, which I think max level is 30. They have said that there are some very challenging and difficult PvE encounters for you to play with. Like essentially these are going to be very difficult missions that require four people and you're going to have to be very good players and you have to have all your abilities kind of set up right and you have to really work together to try and get through these things. So that's going to be a different aspect of the game. It's nice to see if there's a PvE alternative to the end game rather than just the Dark Zone. But I am a little bit concerned about that because people are already max level. The game hasn't been out a week and people are already max level within the game and now they're at the point where they're just trying to get the best gear possible. So that's a bit concerning. Uh, but overall, I have actually have been enjoying my time with the Division. I wouldn't call this video a review because I'm only six or seven hours into the game at this point. But I feel so this game actually has a lot of potential going forward. My personal favorite is the PvE instances that you can do where you essentially go to an area that's going to be a very hard mission. You essentially queue up with the matchmaking system and you kind of get put into a party of other players and you all work together to get through some very difficult encounters. It's very fun in that respect. It's definitely no joke either. Like these things are very difficult where you have to really work together. These things can sometimes take you know more than 30 minutes to actually be able to complete and that's even with a competent group. And the story 
has been great so far. Once again, I talked about at the beginning, I love the setting of this game. I love the theme of it. It's a very interesting idea for the world that we are set in, and the events that are happening are very interesting. It's always kind of fun finding all these pieces of intel throughout the world, which kind of lets you know what happened in the world that kind of made it turn into what it is now. You know, you're always kind of wondering. There's always this little bit of mystery to the game, which is definitely pretty interesting. I've overall been really enjoying the game, but I do have some concerns. I'm worried that maybe there isn't enough content to this game once you actually get to end game. I am worried a little bit about that because there's people who are already you know, level 30, the game's not even a week old, but they're already max level in the game. They're already decked out in really good gear. I'm worried that people are going to get their good gear from the Dark Zone. They're going to get some good gear from these essentially challenge mode missions. And then they're going to be like, well, what do I do now? Do I keep on exploring? Do I keep on doing these missions to try and see if I can beat my own time? Or am I going to go and, you know, go into the Dark Zone and try to get even more loot or just have fun and play against people in the Dark Zone? Like, what are people going to do? I don't know. Uh, but overall, I think the game has a lot of potential. It's just going to come down to are they going to be able to continue to add content to the game that's what's really going to come down to in my own personal opinion but the setting it's fantastic i love roaming throughout new york with all the very interesting characters that there are in this game there's a gang of people called the riders and they do some really horrible things but you also have the cleaners who are a, a group of people who are determined to burn away every little bit of infection in the city so you have these people who are literally running around with flamethrowers all the time which can be horrifying especially if you go into a mission that actually involves them like they're just fire everywhere all the time it's so difficult to get through it's a fun game. I've really been enjoying the game so far, but again, I am a bit concerned about how good the end game is going to actually be, but as somebody who's not even close to the end game part of the game yet, I really don't know too much about it. This video is just for my thoughts and impressions of the game so far. That's what I wanted to give you here in this video, and that's exactly what I did. Hopefully, as well as I explained, I think, a good number of things about the game as well for those of you guys who haven't played it yet, and maybe are interested in either renting it or maybe purchasing it for yourself. So hopefully, I give you guys a good idea of what the game is like, and hopefully you guys will enjoy my video. If you did, please drop me a rating, and let me know know in the comment section below your thoughts on Tom Clancy's Division and exactly whether or not you think it's a good game, do you think it's worth the purchase, are you enjoying playing it, what are your favorite things to do in it, just in general, let me know about Tom Clancy's Division. I'll definitely be interested to read about that. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Drop me a rating. Nope, hope you guys all have a wonderful day.